What do you get when you blend an easy to use camera with premium photo and video image quality and some cool creative functions that inspire the user to use that camera more? You get the Lumix G5. He's Will Crockett. He's a pro photographer, owner and chief tech advisor of a few large photo websites. The photo expert on GeekBeat TV. He's worked as a consultant with some huge companies in the photo industry. And he even gets to present some of his photo training expertise to the great men and women at the Pentagon. Now he's focusing on smarter ways to shoot and share hybrid imaging as he guides you into discovering mirrorless. This camera replaces the Lumix G3 that we, well, we didn't like very much, and it was not on our recommended list. The G5 that we like a lot, by the way, has an updated body that uses the same micro four thirds lenses that we like a ton, and it also houses some very powerful video capabilities that took me by surprise while I test shot this camera. It's an inspiring and user-friendly set of menus and controls that has an overall faster shooting feel that is very superior to the earlier G3. But it has a heftier price tag. It's launched as 800 bucks as a kit with that 14 to 42 rather mediocre lens that we've complained about for a long time. But is this camera worth the money? Is it easy to use? And is it easy to get along with if you're spending money on your first mirrorless camera? Well, let's take a look at the vital signs on the Lumix G5. The Lumix G5 has a 16 megapixel sensor that offers excellent low light image quality up to ISO 3200. It's got a great display screen that flips and tilts like the ones found on the upper end Lumix GH2, but the touch functions on this screen are much better. The EVF, that's an electronic viewfinder, offers a diopter adjust wheel and an eye sensor that cuts out the display when your face gets near the eyepiece. This is an excellent feature, by the way. It also shoots still photos in JPEG or RAW or RAW plus JPEG, and it produces the MPO files when you shoot a 3D photo using a 3D lens. 3D is cool and pretty easy to do, but you do have to buy a special lens. The lens is a little pricey and a little funky, but viewing 3D on a 3D TV means you gotta wear these cool glasses. The G5 creates either SD or HD video in the standard QuickTime MP4 format or the smaller and better AVC HD format. It works in both 720 or 1080p or 1080i versions at 60 frames per second as its maximum frame rate. It does not shoot 3D video by the way, but it will shoot HD video and allow you to shoot JPEG stills at the same time, which is kind of a nice feature that we're seeing on a handful of mirrorless cameras. Sweet idea. It's got all the typical exposure modes that you would expect on a camera like this, plus a good selection of scene mode choices for telling the camera really important things, like you want to shoot a portrait with silky skin, or soft backlighting, or believe it or not, cute dessert. Yeah, as lame as those titles sound, and no, I'm not making them up, they do work exceptionally well, and they are one of the reasons you buy this camera if you can get over it. <laughs> what kind of self-respecting professional photographer would ever think about using scene modes on a mirrorless camera? Me, yeah, try them, try them. <laughs> and there is a creative color control that revs up all kinds of intelligent auto functions that add a distinct and stylish look to both photo and video files. Personally, I love this mode and I can't stop using it.
The autofocus system on the G5 has been greatly improved, and it's significantly better than most of the Lumix G series cameras. And it includes the new AF flexible focus setting. It lets the focus lock with the shutter pressed halfway down, like usual, of course, but then it continuously relocks its autofocus just in case your subject moves. But it will not let the shutter fire if it's not in focus, like autofocus continuous mode does. This feature works really well. The G5's battery is very good, and it will give you over 525 large size JPEGs with autofocus, or just over 80 minutes of full 1080p video with autofocus. Well, what about RAW? Well, RAW files are larger and they take more battery than a JPEG. Plus, you do need to know that when you're moving into the whole mirrorless age, we're moving away from RAW. All right, don't freak out. Yes, you can shoot RAW with mirrorless cameras, but there are a lot of things that these cameras do when they process JPEGs internally that you cannot grab with any sort of RAW processor. So when you think mirrorless, trust its auto functions and let it do the conversion for you. Instead of spending time on that computer, get out there and make more pictures and video. It's got a built-in stereo mic that does a good job, but there's no audio input jack for using a better external microphone. This is a big flaw for this camera, in my opinion. Well, outputs, it's got a USD port and an HDMI port, but the camera will not spit out live view video through that HDMI port like the Lumix GH2 does. So using the G5 as a pro video machine is going to be tough because you can't create really good video with an external production monitor if you can't hook it up. One of the reasons that mirrorless cameras like this will be replacing DSLR style cameras over the next few years is the ability for much better low light shooting in photo and video without any flash at all. Even though the ISO settings go up to 12,800 on the G5, you'll most likely discover, like we did, that ISO 3200 is as high as you'll be happy with. Beyond that, you'll notice some major trade-offs in image quality. The auto white balance under low light conditions is terrific on the G5, but even better is its autofocus performance with low light. Take a look at this video sample I shot with the camera set to black and white mode, ISO 3200, and autofocus set to face detection mode. Here it doesn't see a face, so it'll focus on the glass of water just like we would expect. Then, as we slide the camera to the left, it finds a face and it gracefully moves the focus back to that face. DSLRs won't do that, but mirrorless cameras sure will, and they'll do it automatically, probably better than most people can do manually with a DSLR. Autofocus is always improved by the fastest lenses you can afford, and the Micro Four Thirds selection from both Lumix and Olympus offer plenty of options. More lenses, in fact, than any other lens mount, and keep in mind that any brand of Micro Four Thirds lens will fit any brand of Micro Four Thirds camera body. Low light performance on this G5 does depend on your lens choice, but overall, Low light is excellent on this camera. Who'll be glad that they bought this camera? Well, my weekend photo enthusiast friends that struggle with their DSLR menus and the unpredictable autofocus, most of them are waiting for me to let them know when to chuck their Canon T2Is and their Nikon D5100s up on eBay and buy a mirrorless camera. This is the starting gun. This camera is for you. Also, folks who like to travel and they want the convenience of a point and shoot, but they don't want the bulk of a DSLR, this is a great way to go. And the photographer that wants to get creative with plenty of in-camera file processing that require no computer tricks at all, this camera pops out JPEGs and premium quality HD video files with all those cool looks you can handle. If you're a current Lumix G shooter and you're using the G3 and you're wondering if the G5 is a good move up, it sure is. You already know that I'm not a big fan of the G3, but most folks who are fans of the G3 will be bigger fans of the G5.
If you're using a Lumix GH2, like a lot of the video production pros are, and you're wondering if you should move over to the G5, no. Is the G5 worth moving over from your Sony Addy X or your Olympus OMD? No. No one, however, will be disappointed with this camera, particularly if it's your first mirrorless camera. This could be a great step for you to move into that world of hybrid imaging with your first mirrorless.